Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our virtual college visit series. We are really fortunate to have with us today Ms. Casey Smile with Mount St. Mary's University. Um, Casey, we're really excited to have you here. And this picture just alone, I want it makes me want to know all about Mount St. Mary's. So um, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and pass it off to you to get us started. Great, thank you so much. Um, like Ms. Edwards said, my name is Casey Smile. I'm one of the admissions counselors at Mount St. Mary's University. Um, I technically work with students from DC, North Carolina and Virginia, so I will be your admissions counselor. Um, so if you do have any questions as you start the application process or when you hopefully do start the application process at Mount St. Mary's University, I'm gonna be your main point of contact to answer any questions that you might have. Um, but I'm also a Mount graduate myself. I graduated from Mount St. Mary's University in 2020 with a degree in psychology, and I'm also now in the MBA program here. So I encourage you guys as students, as you're starting to look at undergraduate programs, um, take into consideration what graduate programs your universities that you're interested in um, might have as well. If you do come to the Mount, it's very common for students to um, stay a fifth year, stay a sixth year, and kind of get two degrees, their undergrad and graduate degree, all in one swoop. So definitely take that in consideration, do your research. Um, but yeah, we're Mount St. Mary's University. To give you an idea of where we're located, um, we are about an hour north of Washington, D.C. So we're far enough that you can get away from home, but also if you do miss mom and dad, we are within driving distance, which is awesome. But we're an older university, so we have 214 years of Catholic tradition. Uh, we do like to talk a little bit about our history. Uh, we were founded in 1808 by a man named Father John Dubois. So who, who is this guy? Well, he was a priest. He led the French Revolution in the early 1800s, actually made his way over to Virginia first. Then he came out to Emmitsburg, Maryland, where our university is located. He founded our grotto. Um, if you ever do come up and visit our campus, you'll see there's a beautiful, tall 25-foot statue that um, kind of overlooks our university. That's where our grotto is. Um, the grotto was founded in 1805. Eventually, the grotto turned into a seminary, which turned into a college, which is now the university that it is today. Now, we are a Catholic school, so students always ask, what is going to be the faith-based involvement? Well, around 50% of our student body does identify as Catholic, but we are welcoming to students of all religious backgrounds. No, you don't have to attend mass if you come here. Um, it is optional. We have seven chapels on our campus. The picture on the screen you see, that's our main chapel. Um, so we have mass daily, and then we also have 7 to 9 p.m. masses on Sundays um, for students, because what college student is going to want to wake up early on a Sunday for mass? But we also have sacred spaces on our campus. Again, for those students who aren't necessarily Catholic, but wanna continue practicing their religion in college. Um, and then of course, if we don't have a place of worship on campus for you, we will drive you to an area so you can continue practicing your faith. But it's totally up to you how involved or not involved you wanna get in, um, in your faith in college. But what do we look like today? So we have just over 2000 students in our undergraduate population. We have around 300 graduate students and then also 168 seminarians. There's our men studying to become priests. We're actually the largest seminary now in the United States. But while we are small, we represent people from 47 states and 38 countries. We do a lot of international recruiting with our um, uh, sports teams. We are division one. So it's very common for you to meet someone from another country in our campus, which is pretty awesome. You'll see up there, we have around the 50, 50 male to female ratio. And then that number down at the bottom. So 77% of our students live on campus all four years. You're gonna hear throughout the presentation today that we're not a commuter school. Once our students are on campus, they typically stay on campus for the whole semester. They will just go home for breaks. Uh, again, we have a lot of out-of-state students. So we do have transportation to a local airport um, for students who do fly in and out. but um, for the most part, you're going to be on campus for the whole semester living on campus. Housing's guaranteed all four years. So you don't have to worry about kind of getting kicked off once you're a junior or senior. It is guaranteed. So I want to talk a little bit about academics because um, hopefully that's one of the reasons why you will choose Mount St. Mary's University. But we have over 70 majors and minors. 
um, that you can choose from. We also have dual degree programs that kind of partner with our master's programs here. Um, the big thing to know about us is our curriculum. It's kind of unique to us. So we like to tell students it's broken down into three different parts. About a third of it is gonna be dedicated to something called our core curriculum. You guys have probably taken a history class, a math class, science classes. That's kind of what our core curriculum is made up of, those general education courses. Um, the reason why we have students participate in the core is because in three and a half, four years, we want you to leave the university as a very well-rounded individual. Um, we like to use the example with our biology majors. Like they're gonna be um, very knowledgeable about working with microorganisms, but we also want them to have good public speaking skills, um, good reading, writing comprehension skills, good critical thinking skills, kind of those worldly skills that they're gonna to need to carry them throughout their entire life. A foundation for that is gonna be set in the core curriculum. So all those skills you're gonna to utilize to market yourselves to employers throughout your entire life, the foundation for that is set in the core curriculum, which is awesome. Also, it allows you to kind of dabble in a little bit of everything. So for our students who might be undecided, the core is used as a way to help you find and discover your interests. So like I said, you're gonna take some interdisciplinary courses. You're gonna take a, a, a class in the School of Natural Science and Mathematics, maybe like a science class. And then you'll also take a history class or a business class. So it kind of helps you figure out what you wanna do. Now about a third of our class schedule is dedicated to your major or your minor. And then about a third of your class schedule over the next four years will be dedicated to something we call flex room. So this is again, kind of where we're unique and kind of the benefits to a smaller liberal arts school is that we don't expect you to come into the university knowing what you wanna do for the rest of your life. That is very intimidating and puts a lot of pressure on your shoulders as you're trying to decide what college you want to attend. So we allow our students up to two years to decide what you wanna do. So you can come into the university, take some classes that you might be interested in. They're still going to count towards your 120 credits towards graduation. So whether you declare as early as your second semester or you wait up to two years, you're still gonna graduate on time, which is awesome. We'd love for you to stay um, a fifth year of undergrad, but definitely we wanna try and get you in now in four years and into a job or a grad program. Um, so the core curriculum partnered with that flex room is great for helping students kind of uncover their passions while they're in college. Um, you don't have to decide what you want to do the moment you come into work. Partnering with academics is this idea of internships. So I'm sure you all have heard a lot about internships at um, the college visits as you started them, um, but internships are going to play a crucial role in your college experience. So here at Mount St. Mary's University, around 76% of our students complete at least one internship, if not multiple internships over the four years that they're here. Um, you might be wondering where are students going to complete these internships? Well, we are about, again, an hour from Washington, DC. So we have a Mountain Washington program where our students can go and live in Washington, DC for a semester. The Mount will help you find an internship through our database. And they also will help you find affordable housing. We have housing partnerships there. So that way what you're paying to live in Emmitsburg, Maryland is what you will pay to live in Washington, DC. We also have um, partnerships with people in Baltimore, uh, Baltimore, Maryland, and then also Frederick, Maryland. That is our nearest kind of city. It's about 15, 20 minutes from us. Um, the NIH has a branch there. National Cancer Institute has a branch there. Those kind of big name companies that you've heard. Um, students will go there to complete internships as well. So we really want to stress the importance to students the moment they walk in the door um, regarding these ideas of networking, not only within the university, but outside the university as well, building up their resume, getting those connections. So that way they're not scramming their senior year to start um, finding references, getting those letters of recommendation. They already have that real world experience, um, you know, going into their junior year. So a big question we get from students is what is there to do outside of the classroom at Mount St. Mary's? So if you do come up for a visit, you're gonna see that we're not exactly located in a college town. Um, we are literally on a mountain. They call us the mountain. Um, so there's not a whole lot around us. There are a few restaurants. Um, Gettysburg is about 10 minutes from us. So students will go up there. Um, like I said, Washington is relatively close. Frederick is right down the road. But for the most part, our students are gonna stay on campus because we are a very 
lively, hyperactive campus. So if you're looking for kind of that traditional collegiate feel, um, we're definitely the right school for you because we offer a lot on campus to keep our students involved. Um, anything from our academic clubs to our vet management clubs. I know when I was a student here, my favorite club was our AMP program. They conduct our school dances, like our homecoming, our Christmas dance. Um, they are gearing up right now for our Rampage weekend. That's gonna be a big weekend on campus for our students um, to kind of get them pumped up for finals. I know they're planning to have like the hamster balls on campus that students will be able to kind of get in and hit, hit into each other. Um, they're planning to have like a big end of year dance um, with a carnival, with a petting zoo. So they're always running fun events like that throughout the school year. Um, we also have definitely taken advantage of where we're located, um, kind of on a mountain. We have an outdoor program. They do trips, hiking, kayaking, canoeing, stand up paddle boarding. We have a big zip line on our campus that goes across our pond. Um, you actually climb up an old telephone pole and zip line across the pond. It's a lot of fun. Um, and at all these events, there's typically like free food, roasting marshmallows, hot dogs, hamburgers, um, pizza to get our students involved and interested in all the fun things that we have to offer because you're going to spend a lot of time outside of the classroom um, and grow socially just as much as you're going to grow academically in college. So all these fun clubs and organizations, they're a great opportunity to get involved, but also start getting leadership experience. So these things you might be passionate about, but also they're great resume builders. They give you talking points when you start um, networking with employers. Um, we also have a Pokemon Go club. We have our own esports division. So I know it's becoming more and more popular to get involved in video games. Um, we have a Mario Kart group. Um, a ballroom dancing group, martial arts clubs. So there really is something for everybody. And if there's something on here that you are interested in that we don't have, we want you to bring that, that to the mount um, and just help build up our community here. We are also a division one school. So we have around a third of our student body that will compete at the division one level. Um, anything from lacrosse to soccer, um, we also have rugby, you name it. We love to support our athletes. Um, if you are interested at competing at the division one level, reach out to the coach. You have to go through the NCAA. Um, so definitely look on their website, start completing the forms. Um, going into junior year, senior year is the time to start reaching out to them. Definitely don't wait <laughs> to the end of the semester. Um, get on top of it as soon as you can. Um, but we have 24 NCAA teams and we compete in the Northeast Conference. But of course, for students who don't want to compete at the Division I level, we also have club sports, which is kind of a step down from Division I. Still competitive, you're still going to travel. It's a great resume builder. You're just not waking up super early for lifts. It's not as much of a time commitment. And then also we have in your mural sports, which is a step down from club, kind of like a free-for-all Mount students competing against other Mount students. So. This is a little bit about us. I really hope that you enjoyed the presentation um, and that you want to come tour our campus, but kind of the next steps, if you do like us, are going to be applying. So I'm quickly just gonna run through the application process. We try to make it as streamlined as possible because um, we know you seniors have a lot going on right now, um, but the application will open in August. Um, well, the application for the class of 2026 is still open. We are accepting applications for you seniors, but for juniors, um, the application is going to open typically, typically in August of this year. And we're going to need three things from you. We need you to apply. You can either do that through our Common App or through the university application. We have an average GPA of a 3.5. We look at weighted GPA 9 through 11. So we're also going to need your transcript. And then we're also gonna need one layer of recommendation from a guidance counselor or a teacher. So just those three things are required, but there's also additional things that you can include that really um, complete your application, allow us to learn more about you. So a personal statement or an essay, you can aim for about a page, doesn't have to be super long. You can follow either the prompts that we have online or submit something that you're very proud of from your English class. Um, also, some type of resume or including your extracurricular activities. Anything that we can't tell from your transcript, we still want to hear about because, um, you know, it, great grades is awesome, but we want to hear about all the things that you've accomplished in high school that really make you who you are. And then additional layers of recommendation. 
I tell students aim for like one to two. Um, that's kind of what we look for. Um, and finally, SAT, ACT scores. So we are test optional. We were test optional long before the pandemic. We don't think it's a good predictor of college success. We know that you're gonna grow a lot in college. Um, we don't think sitting in a room for four hours taking a test is a great predictor. So again, we wanna hear about everything you've accomplished outside the classroom. Um, we place more weight on that than a test. And then these are our scholarships. Um, so they range from 20 to $30,000 off tuition. Um, so if you do have specific questions about the scholarships, you can reach out to me. Um, but we are very transparent in our awarding process. You can just go online to the link below um, and you'll know pretty much exactly what scholarship you're going to be awarded before you get accepted um, or before you even apply. But when you do apply and if you get accepted, you will know what scholarship you've been awarded with your acceptance letter. So our average financial aid package is around $35,000, and that brings our average true cost of attendance. So that's what a student can expect to pay on average um, if they do attend Mount St. Mary's University per year um, to around $23,000. So it's definitely affordable. Um, room and board comprehensive fees are all included in that. So again, my name is Casey. If you do have any questions, definitely reach out to me because I'm happy to help. All right. Thank you, Casey. Of course. Yeah. Um, if students do have questions, just direct them to me. Okay. Um, again, we're a chatty bunch. So, <laughs> um, but we are open for visits. I know it's kind of a little bit of a drive up, um, but we'd love to have students come up and visit us and take a tour. That's awesome. What a beautiful campus and amazing programs that you guys have things going on there. And I feel like there's something for everyone, you mm -hmm. know? So yeah. we really appreciate you sharing it with us today. Thank you for coming back this Friday. Of Thank course. You. Yeah, I get technical difficulties. I absolutely get it. So. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but we'll definitely be staying in touch. So thanks again. Okay, great. All Thank right. you so much, Shannon. Take Bye. care. Enjoy your Bye. Friday. Thanks, you too.